Hello, this is the Chart Profit video, approaching two hours into the trading day on Friday the 10th of June. Looking at price distribution for the e-mini S&P. This is the chart as I showed it on the 27th of May. Uh, nothing significant has changed in terms of the controlling price, which we know remains at 2041. First showed this chart actually on the 13th of May. We were talking about possibility of that controlling price uh, moving, migrating. It didn't do that. And so, as I said here on the graphic, as long as 2041 is the controlling price, the current distribution suggests development to 2120. And as we know, if you look at the pre-open today, here's 2120. I think we're about a quarter of a point shy of that target. Sometimes from a clear a bullish target like this, when it's hit, you'll see the extreme of that distribution, uh, a quick response or a very obvious response from the sellers and significant uh, selling will be marked. haven't done that yet, although we have seen the Imini today uh, printing down below 2100, to say, on the pre-open uh, on Wednesday, uh, that we're close to the 2120 target, and I'm interested to see if the sellers will react. So we have the E-mini stalled at that target at the moment. Where I'm playing it for the moment, as I've just said here, I prefer to see further significant buying, like this here, the green, uh, marked before looking at new longs. That's just a little bit of caution. Uh, as long as price in the longer time frame holds above 2087 down here, uh, which is now the major point of control, then E-mini remains in a strong price location. So in the best case, hopefully, we've just stalled at this point. If this is the top of a distribution of some degree, then we'll see some kind of obvious uh, reaction here from the sellers. There's two kind of scenarios. We could print plenty of time up here in this area here. We could see that point of control of the current distribution uh, currently at 2041. That could migrate higher. That would probably be bullish. I always see a clear response from the sellers, uh, and if that's the case, if this just distribution is complete, we'll see a pretty swift um, auction down to that point of control at 2041. That's the normal course of events. I'm hoping for the former. I'm hoping we see plenty of time printed up here in that 2041 move higher. So here's those two levels I just mentioned, really seriously important levels. 2041 down here, if you remember that, um, we saw support at that level. And the E-mini rallied sharply from there. I said, as long as we hold this level, we're in a strong price location. Price below here would suggest we go back down to here pretty quickly. Here's the uh, New York breadth indicators through Thursday. Net new highs uh, indicator here holding above zero. Percentage stocks greater than their 50-day moving average remains above 50. And so the breadth line on the pulse chart remains green. Momentum is above zero, so the trend is up, and momentum is still positive, is heading higher. There's plenty of room up here for a correction, uh, but as long as price in the longer term holds above 205.40, that's major time support, the major point of control, again, the spider in a very strong price location. This is the current Russell 2000 ETF, IWM, major point of control, which is now strong support at 115.35, so the fact that the, uh, the chart uh, managed to print above that level was a big positive for the market and as long as we hold that position above that level uh, it's strong price location. After an early sell-off the Russell is attempting to come back here. This is the UK's FTSE 100, pretty bad day for the FTSE, down quite sharply and yesterday we've had this level here identified for well since the February bottom as Initially major resistance on the way up. This is the halfway point off last year's high to this low, which comes in on this dotted line here. This was encouraging. It faded pretty quickly. What happened subsequent to that is we built a 12-month point of control here at 61.39. Went back up and then clear. That's natural resistance. And we've sold off that pretty sharply. I don't like this pattern when I see this. We've got a lower high here at a major halfway point and you can see the reaction there. We're now actually currently printing below 61.39 in a pretty uh, weak price location. So not very happy about the FTSE right now. Longer term traders, I'd be looking at price back above here before I even considered the long side. And the DAX, German DAX at the end of this week, sharply lower and uh, the big support just a little lower here at 97.40. Just a reminder, this was previously support here, proven support. It's a major, so price down here would be uh, reasonably alarming. And 
uh, suggest a very weak chart. So we want to see some support here if we reach that next week. So there's some negatives there on some of those charts. But in the main, the US uh, charts are relatively stronger, much stronger than the European. And there's no excessive uh, optimism to talk about um, from a contrarian point of view in the uh, sentiment indicators. We're looking here at the Rydex assets ratio on my version. Uh, it's still pretty low. Um, S&P's rallied quite away from the February low, and this has stayed pretty muted down here at around 4, um, indicating that the retail trader is not very excited or really doesn't care very much for this rally, doesn't want to get involved. And that's usually a positive for the market. And if we look at the bull fund assets in isolation, you can see these arrowed lines here show where the just the bull fund assets get below uh, this blue line here, which represents a certain low level in assets. And that tends to bring in, if we look above there, levels that the market rallies from rather than anything else. And it's very apparent when you see at the price action since that low, as I've just described, we saw a little rally in the bull assets and then they turned over. And we're kind of back down around that level at the moment. So this is more fuel, I would suggest, than anything else. This is the public poll from AAII. Two weeks ago, the bulls percentage uh, reached an extreme low of just 17.8%. So we're looking here at just the bulls percent in isolation. And uh, that 17.8% was an extreme low, the lowest level of bullish sentiment since 2005. And that was just two weeks ago. Since then, the market has rallied. The bulls jumped to 30.2% last week. And this week, the bulls percent came in a little lower, actually 27.8. That's the same as the bears percent, 27.8, which is on a seven-week low. So um, bulls and bears tied this week at 27.8. But they're coming off a real sentiment uh, extreme low just two weeks ago here. I was looking at the bull fund asset, sorry, the public bull percentage uh, just here in isolation on this chart. It's a weekly chart obviously and I've run uh, some Bollinger Bands through here, 40 period. And I've just noted, I've done this in the past but I'm going to try and revamp these Metastock charts. If we look at the uh, bulls percentage, when it dips below that lower Bollinger Band, and you can see that with the dotted lines here. Uh, and again, from a contrarian uh, point of view, they tend to come in close to points where the market starts to rally. This one didn't. This one obviously did, and we've just had another one over here. Like a lot of these sentiment indicators, more effective picking the lows uh, than they are the tops. But as I say, I'll try and revamp all these Metastock charts and keep them up to date. This week in the Investors Intelligence poll, the bulls percent was actually quite sharply higher, 47.3. Now that is something to watch. It's very close to uh, the high here, 47.4, which was reached seven weeks ago, and that was the highest bulls percent since July last year, so nearly a 12-month high for the bulls percentage. So the newsletter writers are quite bullish. They may turn uh, more bullish than they've been for nearly a year. You can see from the chart we're not at particularly elevated levels, but we need to watch this. Uh, we noted recently when that four-week moving average of the net bulls minus bears when that previous peak was exceeded in April just here that we saw um, correction from that mid-April higher for a few weeks. It's just a pattern you become familiar with. Uh, the next one would be that four-week moving average is exceeding that peak. So uh, if we see it up here, that would be a sign that possibly uh, there's a little too much enthusiasm. The US fund flows reported equity fund, including ETF outflows of $852 million, uh, in the week to the 8th of June. That's not huge. Uh, but the four-week flow number uh, down here in black is a negative $10.33 billion. But the point is it reached uh, a negative $26 billion just two weeks ago here. So as we talked about at the time, there were plenty of bears at that point, not as many as there were at this point. So just looking at the sentiment indicators themselves, there's no real alarming rampant bullishness at the moment. First sign for me for uh, any kind of negative would be the right X ratio um, exceeding that level there. That would take it to a multi-month high. It wouldn't have to do much. We're only talking about a move from four something at the moment above five up to six. And that would be the most bullish that the Rydex traders have been this year. Um, but at the moment, 
There's no big commitment to the long side from the retail traders. This line, as I mentioned previously, 50-day uh, high indicator of that indicator, and it's often uh, the point when the market decides it needs to head, uh, head lower for a while, um, and that kind of coincides at the moment with that previous peak, so I'm watching that. It's about 5.5. Uh, Looking here at the T-bonds, uh, ETF, TLT, we noted last week that the three-year had migrated higher to 130.77. And here we are today testing the February high as the market seeks out the safe haven at the moment. So quite a rally for TLT since that uh, controlling price migrated up to that level. GLD, the gold ETF, again, a safe haven bit at the moment, higher like the bonds. Uh, we came down and found support, if you remember, at this previous point of control at 115.50 seen the migration to 118.22 in here somewhere, um, found support close to the April low and then rallied back above very quickly, uh, spiked up there uh, above 118.22 which is now the major. So we're back in a position now as long as the chart holds this level it's in a very strong price location. Looking here at USO, the oil fund ETF, you remember last week we talked about this negative divergence with the price oscillator, price coming higher and a lower peak on the momentum indicator. Oil actually, um, for the first couple of days this week, uh, was strong and actually went out to a new high here for this move. Thursday and Friday, uh, we're a bit lower here. I'd probably expect to see this indicator get back to zero. It usually does when it turns down after a divergence. Uh, that may just mean that we range for a while. Um, it may mean that we sell off here. But unless this um, Controlling price at 1078 migrates as long as price remains above that level, it's in a strong location. Uh, we talked about this chart last week, um, it was the most volatile following the uh, jobs data as a big sell off in the dollar index. And we were watching the halfway point off the May low, which came in here, and just through early part of the week, especially Tuesday, we were printing down here. That's really weak and has me. Uh, not looking very favorably at the dollar at that point, but we've managed to quite strongly, especially today, jump back above that halfway point. So that's the first thing the dollar would need to do. Surprise so us, jump back above that halfway. Um, and now we're looking at the two year, which is the big resistance up here at 95.25. Depending on your time frame, if you're a short term frame, uh, uh, trader, uh, this is encouraging, and we may see a rally to here. But price above here, I would need to see before I look long side of the dollar index. Some of the volatility today in Europe, uh, largely due to, well, there's always stuff to worry about, isn't there? But what we're looking at in Europe, especially the UK, is the possibility of Brexit on June 23rd when we have the referendum. And with opinion polls apparently looking more favourable for the exit camp, that could be why we've seen the pound here selling off. It's below its one year point of control, so it's now in a weak price location. Looks like we're going to close the week below that level. So that's at 144.32. Um, I want to see a clear higher low uh, above that point of control to look at the long side. Um, even then you're a brave man for the next couple of weeks. Um, but down here there is minor support here, or there is support here, um, just about where we are at 143 off the February low to that high. This is just technical stuff and obviously the risk event looming like this, this may mean nothing at all, this support, but if we see price down here that would certainly look like a weak chart. And finally we look at the Euro FX chart. If you remember one week ago um, we mentioned that the four year uh, controlling price had migrated up to 113.13. That's this line here. We're currently printing below that um, in a weak price location. So the dollar's looking a bit better at the end of this week. Got a little bit risk off with uh, gold and bonds rallying and the European indices having a pretty bad end to the week. Okay, that concludes. Once again, I thank you for watching and have a good weekend.